when it comes to calling, back in those days, there's a couple outfitters that uh, my dad knew real well, and one of them was named Keith Stilson. And back then, those guys, they made what commonly would call a, a flute. And what they did was they took like a water pipe, like an inch copper tubing, and they cut a piece about this big and another piece about this big where they could put them together. And what they did is on one end, they took and, and cut a piece of, of uh, wood and stuck it in there and then they notched, they notched out that metal where that copper is to make, you know, like, like a little flute. And uh, Keith, he'd, he'd put that together and then he'd hold one in and it, it, it was really tinny sounding. But, you know, you gotta realize back then those elk weren't bugle shy. There was nobody doing that. This is, you know, 1960, 62, 63. Let me show you how I built that bugle back when I was in high school. I went down to the plumbers and got a piece of PVC pipe. I cut it to the proper length I wanted it to be cut. Then here's the secret. I cut a notch in it. And you got to be real careful that the slant is correct. At the time I had a little, a little pattern I used. Then I went down the lumber yard and I got a dowel. And then I cut the dowel. And then I did, I cut it. And then I hammered it into the PZV pipe. And voila, I have a little flute here. And of course, I took and ground off all the sharp edges off, off of it. And um, a lot of times I'd have to pop that out dowel out and refit that cut but most of the time i'd get a flute and that's how i did it back when i was in high school you know my dad was doing a movie on uh, on ale cotton in wyoming i was just old enough and i was fiddling around with uh, calls and stuff and so we'd go in the park there. Gordon got a lot of good footage of bull elk bugling, and I practiced a lot on bugling elk. As you can see, my own little flute. And so I took it up there, and this is, uh, I'll tell you right now, this is way back in 1964 or something. I was sitting there bugling in the Quakers, and if you really notice, as I whistle with that little whistle, in the background, you can barely see those elk there, and a bull elk answering me back. And I think there I was like maybe 15 years old. So I bugle and he bugle. And I still remember that. That was just as the rut was coming on. And, and then down below us was another bull that Gordon filmed. And he bugled back up at me. And they were going back and forth there. In this footage here, you can see of me, uh, I think it was 16 years old, and you can see that bugle. That's my homemade bugle. I take and put a piece of rope and, and tied it so it, was, it had a little sling on it, and you can see that in this footage here. Gordon filmed it, filmed me with a bull, and we packed it out, and that was it. Folks, I hope you're enjoying the story of Blaze Trails Forgotten. And if you do, please give me a thumbs up, okay? It really helps me out. And I just want to let you know that I've got a lot more of these coming out. A lot of my dad's old hunting stories, a lot of my hunting stories. Plus, I haven't even dug into the stuff that I did in Africa back in the 90s. That was a little Western back there. So just subscribe, and you won't miss any of these episodes that are coming out. I got a great big piece. It was like this big around. It was black holes about this long. And I stuck it on the end of that. But I couldn't reach it. <laughs> I was way out. So I went down to the hardware store, Benson's, and got one of those corks, like you'd put a cork in your bottle or something. And I, I 
rammed it in the, into it. And I used it. Oh, man, it had a real hollow sound. And, hey, this sounds pretty good. But the trouble is the thing is like this long. So I made a little thing for it to hang on. But when I on horseback, I, I put it in my gun scabbard. You know, I just put it in as guiding. And it really did a good job. In fact, it did so good that one day I was in Louie Meadows and I was tooting away and I had a hunter. And I looked down below me down. The Louie Meadows went clear down like this almost to, to the Crystal Creek. And, and I look down there and I see these two hats come along like this, coming up like this. <laughs> and I stopped bugling and they, and they come up and they looked at me and turned around and walked off. And so I get back to camp after dark and, and there's Keith sitting there and he takes me aside and he says, don't you ever tell anybody that you called me in. I go, okay, okay Keith, I'll never tell anybody <laughs> that I called you in. <laughs> But it worked pretty good, you know. So back in those days, outfitters, they never bugled. They never, that was kind of the first flute or bugle used. Yeah, back then it was very few guys had them. Most of the guys, and I knew a few of the guides, you know, when I was in high school. And they just did what dad did, take out a spent cartridge and blow on it and hope to hear something. So by the time I got back from the service in the 70s, Elk calling had gone to a next level. Dad and Lone Ball had designed the cow call and uh, they were using diaphragm calls, which were turkey calls with a grunt tube. And so that yeah, put it into a way different level. And then from there, other people designed other calls. So that's kind of my history of elk calling. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time on Blaze Trails for God.